Hi, and uh, welcome to this session. We, are, um, we, we set up this session to talk a little bit about the, uh, the, all the analytics and all the metrics that we collect within the OpenStack project from the developer side and from other aspects, but especially focusing on the development activity. Um, and uh, get a little bit of an overview of all the tools that we have right now and use this um, time also to, um, to try to gather feedback from consumers or users, people that actually look at that data to see, um, uh, to, to get a better understanding of uh, what the needs are uh, from the, uh, for, for those, uh, for, this, for this data. And um, um, so I'm Stefano Maffulli, I'm the community manager of OpenStack. I'm mainly focusing on Developer, developers and the development of OpenStack. And we have three of the um, people that are mainly involved into building this metric system. So I'll give you um, time to in introduce yourself. Um, uh, w the way we want to structure this conversation is uh, to give, a, to have an overview, to get this chance, a chance to members of, uh, of the panel here to talk about the the tools that we have in place, and then have a, a time to discuss uh, about why we're collecting all these metrics and uh, get feedback from you. So, um, thank you, Stefano. <coughs> My name is Alex Friedland. I am the um, co-founder and chairman of Neurances, where I uh, these days focus on uh, uh, our community effort and participation. Hi, I'm uh, Dan Stangle. Um, I'm a software engineer at HP in the open source program office. Uh, and I've been working on the Git DM uh, analysis tools for uh, a little more than six months now. Um, well, I'm Daniel Izquierdo. I'm co-founder of uh, Criteria, a company specialized in open source software development metrics. Um, we are in this case in charge of the activity board. Perfect. So when I when I joined OpenStack uh, a couple of years ago, um, I was um, interested in understanding very rapidly the level of activity of every company inside the OpenStack ecosystem, so that I could help um, newcomers being being more effective and more rapidly effective into um, discovering the places where they could uh, focus their efforts on, and but also to understand what what. The, uh, the, the existing companies, what they were doing inside OpenStack, because I, I had a hard time even understanding what Nova was. So um, who was mostly active in Nova, who was increasingly active or decreasingly active in Glance or uh, someone else. So that was w my drive to, to start looking into the, the, the data of OpenStack. And then uh, slowly things have evolved. So um, Alex, well, why don't we start by looking at what the one of the tools that we have available now to measure things inside the OpenStack community that um, you have built. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to stand up? Sure. I mean, right. okay, very good. So, uh, we um, when we started to actually do the um, uh, work in the community upstream, uh, we decided that we needed to introduce metrics internally, and um, um, we, you know, basically developed a tool that we used internally that we liked so much that we just made it available for everybody else. That's how it was originally born, and um, I think it's um, here somewhere. Um, no, it's right here. So um, there is a website called stackalytics.com and the tool that's called Stackalytics. And the idea behind it is that we, um, we wanted to take data from the publicly available data sources, uh, you know, from GitHub, from Garrett, from uh, mailing lists, um, and the, uh, the first thing, and then look at this data from different angles. So you can see, you know, um, um, you, you can look at the lines of code that people write, you can see who the people are who commit at a, at a specific time frame, you can look at number of commits, and, uh, you know, th 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 those are the different dimensions here. So, um, so let's, let's look at something very simple, right? So let's look at Havana, for example. And you choose Havana here in this, um, uh, drop down, and then you decide what you're going to look at, right? And so here, uh, OpenStack itself has, you know, there are multiple definitions of what constitutes OpenStack. And so you can have just core projects, or you can have projects in incubation. We decided to list documentation separately, 
infra is also a separate group. Uh, then there is, you know, greater stack forge, and that's where people put uh, different projects that sometimes are just innovations that they put around the OpenStack ecosystem or something that will later make its way into OpenStack proper. And so you can look at each of that separately or you can look at all of the innovation that's happening in the greater OpenStack ecosystem on Stack Forge. Uh, so I was just kind of look at the, you know, the, larger, the larger metric and, uh, um, and what, it kinda, what it shows you, and uh, this is a Windows machine and I'm unused to Windows now, <laughs> uh, it's been a while, like two years, after, you know, after 24 years of using Windows, Microsoft, I switched and I have a hard time remembering. So, uh, so basically what it shows you is, it shows you the overall activity, so you can kind of see you know, how active people are, and you can see that you know, here's a freeze and things are going slower. Uh, then the companies that are actually um, contributing, and uh, this particular metric is commits, so you look at how many commits, and then you know the number of commits here per company, and then you can do a drill down and see who made those commits. So you know we can click on HP, and sure enough, you know Monty Taylor would be the number one guy, as we would have expected, right? So he's right there listed, and then you can drill deeper should you decide to go there, here, and you know see and you know where Monty from HP committed, and so on and so forth. So basically, it's a very primitive analytics tool, but it's also very visual. And the reason we like it is because the, the data is coming directly from the public sources. The source code for Stackalytics is available on StackForge, and anybody who wants to contribute to it can. And in fact, the philosophy that we wanted to subscribe to is that statistics of a project like OpenStack should be completely transparent to anybody who is participating in the project and it should be governed by community just like any other project. So uh, another, another um, uh, useful feature of Stackalytics that we use it internally for is uh, in open source to be successful you have to build community. So how do you see you know, how is community built? So um, when we first put it out, uh, people found out about it and you know, we evangelized a little bit and um, uh, but unclear if it's gonna be a popular tool. Now, uh, today, you can just go to a module here and you can say Stackalytics, and it should come up. There it is, Stackalytics. Click, and I can take HP out for this particular report. And uh, sure enough, in Havana, most of it has been done by us, but you can see there is already a very large number of um, companies that are partaking in it and adding things to it. So there is somewhat of a community building around it. And we're hoping that the nice house, and let's see what's happening in nice house, um, this, you know, the numbers will be larger. And uh, you know, uh, see our participation goes from 80 plus percent to 70 plus percent, and I'm hoping that's gonna continue to drop down further because we want everybody to participate in it. And it's a platform that um, you know, all of us uh, you know, should really, you know, in our opinion, all of us should develop further and use for ways to, um, you know, see statistics about OpenStack. So finally, the statistics that we see today is uh, based on blueprints, completed and drafted, commits, emails in the mailing list, uh, lines of code, reviews, and top mentors. Um, and um, um, that's just the beginning. And whatever other ideas we have, we can put here and hopefully you know you guys here and greater guys in the community would offer uh, ideas that can be integrated here and join in the development so we just spend one minute on uh, describing the the last one the top mentors um, so I believe the top mentors is um, a heuristic that we use to um, so let me take uh, uh, so who the top mentors for ice for, for Havana would be Well. Oh yeah, instead of yeah. Yeah. Go so to all. We, can, we can clean this, and we'll see a lot bigger. So you can see the companies and the individuals um, who are actually, you know, doing reviews. And um, I believe so. Um, um, here, um, if you look here, you know, these are the people, and so it essentially shows you. 
uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the number of reviews, the largest number of reviews and the, and the metrics on ratios. And I don't remember the exact, um, the exact um, uh, heuristics we use, but essentially this is the level of usefulness that people have, over the overall number of reviews, and then how useful those reviews were to the community. Yeah, it's, I, I like it uh, because it gives a, 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 an another, another view of how the reviews are a, a, a vol an important activity inside the OpenStack community, which is reviewing somebody else's code. It's something that we have built into the, our, our systems from uh, the very beginning, and we wanted to be uh, very open, not have committers, but have people that anybody can submit code um, and but make sure that that code is actually good with a, with a public review right. system. So we do we do the overall metric on reviews. You can just do reviews on um, you know each individual projects. But I think this is the first time top mentors is the first one. So reviews is right here. Yeah. Uh, but top mentors is the first time we're doing some heuristics, yeah. which is you know like the effectiveness of reviews and there is you know the algorithm is actually des uh, described on the wiki page. I just don't remember yeah. it offhand. Okay. But the idea here is once you get the data. There is all kinds of things we can do with this, but again, it has to be done in a transparent way for yep. everybody to um, consume. Cool. Dan, do you want to tell us what, what you're doing? Um, One more. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, so I won't take too long on Git DM, but um, just briefly, uh, I'm Dan Stangle, and um, Git DM is uh, is kind of the uh, Ford Model T of uh, contribution analysis tools. Um, it's very simple, uh, fairly reliable, and uh, you know easy to use, um, but it doesn't have a whole lot of features, um, and it, just about anything you want to do. It doesn't go very fast, and it doesn't look very pretty. Um, <laughs> But it, yeah, but it does the job. It'll get you there. Um, and so that's uh, and and when uh, uh, when HP asked me to um, to start running and, and um, compiling community analysis, uh, community contribution metrics, it was kind of the only game in town. Uh, so we sort of took over from where um, Mark McLaughlin left off. <coughs> and uh, I mean, like I said, really simple. So that this on the command line is basically all you do to run uh, a git dm analysis. Um, but it doesn't have the, um, the nicer UI features that you find um, in the uh, Paturgia tool set or in Stackalytics. Um, and so, you know, I don't know, it doesn't have a lot of um, potential for future growth because almost everything that we've had to do to get dm um, to um, munge it to work with the OpenStack community architecture or framework um, has been somewhat kludgy. Um, and so I think um, there are newer, better tool sets available, um, some of them built in-house or within the OpenStack community that, that in the future may provide uh, a better option for us. But we'll keep working on GitDM because it works and it's there. So um, you know, it's not going away, but it probably won't look any better uh, in six months. <laughs> um, could you, so you mentioned that um, HP asked you to, somebody at HP, the big, big demand, asked you to uh, compile statistics. What kind, of, uh, what kind of data are you collecting and why? Yeah, so uh, the kind, I'll give you a, a quick sort of glance. Um, Git DM doesn't produce these charts. Uh, Unlike Stackalytics, you, you kind of have to do this by hand, importing uh, CSV files and stuff. But um, GitDM sort of covers all the most basic first order metrics. So lines of code, uh, number of change sets, um, for the most part, launch pad defects, although that's sort of broken right now for some of the projects, uh, and uh, uh, Garrett code reviews. Um, and, and so, it's, it's kind of just the basic by the numbers uh, canvassing of what's happening in the community. Um, and what, why, why your, uh, your company, why is it, was HP, in, is HP interested in getting this data? 
Yeah, so uh, I mean, a lot of people ask that question. Um, we have, uh, over the last couple of years, HP has, um, I think, somewhat obviously ramped up our investments in OpenStack um, dramatically. And so um, there's a lot of things that we can do internally to gauge uh, how well we're doing and how much we're able to generate and contribute back. Um, and this is just sort of another, uh, in this case, external measure of uh, what we're able to, to do in the community. Um, and it also, frankly, gives us a better picture of what everybody else is doing. So, um, you know, it's valuable on lots of, lots of different uh, levels. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, Danny? Well, like, I prepared some slides here. Uh, I also have a live uh, demo if, if you want to have a look there. So, uh, what we want to provide here, as we were discussing with Stefano and some other guys from the OpenStack community, is uh, to give uh, development data about how OpenStack Foundation is performing, in the end how companies are going around, or how uh, everyone is still in there. It's, as Joshua said in the previous uh, talk, was something like chaotic flaws. So I think we can, we can try to understand this and try to have a, a, a path all together to, to provide such information. So uh, in this case, in, in this tool, uh, we are providing some basic and some advanced metrics. Uh, this is just an example. We can go later to the live uh, demo, which is, uh, in this case, you can have here information about the, uh, the, the whole life with all of the projects aggregated, uh, uh, measured in commits, so there's something like uh, 50,000 commits, and then you can have information about the sev seven days change or 30 days change or anything else. So you can see, for instance, that during the last year, there was an increase with respect to the previous year of 73%, which is quite a lot. And then you, we can have something uh, a bit more uh, elaborated, because what, what we are doing in the end here is we, we are counting potatoes. We can say, okay, this somehow we, these guys are from this company, these other guys are from this company, so we can say that all of these commits are coming from such company or such organization. But uh, probably we can go step ahead and try to have uh, more useful, well, I wouldn't say what we have now is, is not useful, but it's basic, let's say, and somehow, but we can try to go a bit farther away, like the top mentors idea, which is great, or the, I don't know if you know that Russell Bryant's uh, uh, metrics about code review, timing, etc. So I think we should go there in somehow. And what, what we are providing here is uh, just an example. Is that first of all, uh, we, this is kind of a well, really ugly uh, charts, but they are uh, pyramids of population. Okay, the left part is uh, the developers that are still developing, and the right part is the developers that were born at some point, okay? Oh, sorry. So if you check here, if you go to the, the, the 5.0, which means uh, basically 15 months old, this, this says that there are 47 guys that uh, are still committing since they were born 15 months ago, okay? And on the, li on, on the right side, you can check that 15 months ago, there were 122 uh, new developers coming to the OpenStack community. So it means that the retention rate for the OpenStack community for the 15 months ago, it's closely to a 40%. So this is the kind of things we can have, and we can have evolution of this attraction rate or attra attack also attraction bar somehow. So this is the kind of uh, useful things we, we think that we can provide to the OpenStack community. So uh, this is based on open source tools. This is the Metrics Sigmar uh, community. It's all in GitHub. You can go there and download all of, all of the tools. Uh, I would say that it's a bit more complex than Stack Analytics or GitDM. But then what you can have there is uh, uh, you get all of the data. So uh, you can get MySQL databases. Either you can get uh, JSON files to fit your own, uh, let's say, your own dashboards of metrics or any other visualization tool you may you may have. So uh, 
some of the things that we were required by Stefano to talk about was the, the future of, of these tools. Um, one of the things I'd like to, to, to see for the OpenStack community is to have, let's say, open data for everyone here and to have this quality source of data. And this is probably something that we have to do all together to have this, you know, we are, we were dealing somehow all in different paths with the unique affiliations or, uh, or unique identities or affiliations for each of the companies. And even as, again, Joshua said, Monty Taylor was one of the, uh, one of the developers of that was changing a lot for each company. So this is the kind of things that we should uh, probably put together and work all on this to have better data in the end. And uh, yeah, another point here is that uh, all these visualization platform that we have is quite easy, extensible by others. So once you get the JSON files and everything, you can simply change uh, metrics around. And well, the question here is probably what, what would you like to have here and to see in, in somehow, also from maybe a developer point of view, maybe from a more man managerial point of view, maybe from uh, third parties uh, just willing to invest some resources in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, let me show you just uh, how this how this seems. This is uh, the website, the main website of Affinity Board. Uh, you can see some information around, like uh, the first line is the this one here is Git activity with some information about the community, some evolution here. This is the one that this is the chart I copied in slides. But you also have uh, participants in uh, Launchpad activity and what type of things they are doing, also evolution, et cetera, and the same for mailing list here, okay? You see that there are uh, close to 4,000 different ticket participants at some point in Launchpad, which is good. Uh, and you also have some discussion participants in mailing list, which is close to 1,600, okay? And then there are a bunch of options around to, All right, maybe you, you can know. show the, the studies that you publish at each uh, release. Oh, yeah. The, so the summary is? Yeah, uh, okay, well, this is the starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I go here? Okay, it's there. Well, wait, okay. Uh, uh, this is another example of the, another view that you can see about the, how the community is evolving. Uh, this is uh, specifically for the case of open uh, yeah, for the Havana release. And you can see, again, comments about uh, all of the companies here. This is just another view. I mean, with uh, this is all of these charts you can visualize here are based on the same JSON files. So that's what I said, something like, okay, you can take all of that data, of open data in the end, and you can fit your own visualization platform. This is uh, what we think might be interesting for you, but it's great to have, it would be great to have feedback from you, but also, you know, we can build some other things if you are interested in. Um, yeah, that's all. It's the same yeah. for launchpad activity or mailing list activity, et cetera. Just uh, let me throw some other ideas we may have around to, you know, to go ahead with this. It's, uh, some metrics like time to fix or time to review done by uh, Russell or mentors metrics or maybe we can even go for meetups, measurements, like number of guys around and et cetera. So yeah, just some ideas around. So, yeah. I I know I have a bunch of needs uh, from the community manager pr perspective. Um, but so, and I keep asking uh, Peter Gia and others to, uh, to contribute um, uh, to their tools, to, to get their tools improvement. But you know, if we have questions from the audience, I mean, what, why, what would you like to see? What kind of metrics do you collect about OpenStack or would you like us to collect and expose in OpenStack?
it's absolutely absolutely true it's uh I think it's a, it's a very difficult it's a very difficult line to to, to balance. Uh, on one end, you cannot improve what you do not measure, and on the other hand, every time you measure something or you look at something, you disturb it. So I mean, physicists know this very well. So um, yeah, Alec, I mean, you guys, what do you think? Uh, you're the experts in stats and and smart people in the room. How do we? Yeah. This is what you said. You, yeah. Right. I mean, so it, it's a, it's a hard problem. So how do we how do we solve it? How do we address it? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I I work at a large company, and uh, um, a lot of the feedback that I hear is, um, you know, more on the negative vein that um, you know, we're somehow trying to game or uh, influence the metrics to make us look better. And and I mean, I think that kind of criticism. Um, might be leveled at other players too, um, but from my perspective, uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. And I think also that, you know, it's better to have the measures and, and in an open and transparent form that everybody can see uh, how these are generated and um, and then and the data behind it, uh, rather than than not have it available in any form. And so, you know, there's there's benefits. Uh, and there's negatives to this gamification. But um, I think, I, I don't know if I speak for most of us, but I'd rather have the data than not and take that risk. Um, I have a question to the audience, and uh, who is using what? So uh, does you know, this group here, do you actually measure statistics? Do you, do you care? Do you look at it? Who, who uses Stackalytics today? So about, you know, this side of the house does. <laughs> um, is there, a, you know, who uses some kind of a tool to measure statistics? Um, and uh, well, you, you raised the hand. What, what tool do you use? Um, that, so I, if you don't mind, I, I would take it. Um, I haven't been thinking about uh, defining uh, specific profiles for, for groups, but for individuals, um, I did uh, have in mind something like uh, that I have here on the, um, let's see, um, on this second part of the activity board. The activity board right now, it's made of two main tools. One is um, built with the, the dashboard that, that Daniel um, showed, and the other is this other tool that is basically aggregating data from the different, the different tools that we have right now, uh, Launchpad, Git, uh, and Garrett, and build, and build uh, profiles for uh, for each of the developers, so it doesn't look very well. Right, so 
for example, we get personal, personal pages for each of the uh, people involved, solving bugs, committing uh, code, or doing reviews, um, pulling information from, this is the OpenStack ID, is the uh, profile page for the member of the OpenStack Foundation. Um, you know, we get pictures and things, and, and then a little bit of charts. It doesn't look great at this resolution, I have to say. Um, you know, we get, and, and uh, we also get like Stackalytics, the details of the individual commit with the date, uh, the repository. And we also, uh, this tool is capable of creating connections between uh, uh, context. Uh, so if, the, if there is a commit that is related to a bug, then it, it shows the dependency between the two and from the one page. So this is a, um, like, um, I mean, it's an initial piece we, we could create. Uh, try to extrapolate behaviors and, and create generic generic profiles from yeah, this. I'd also add that there are some uh, third-party uh, providers of that type of profiling information. A great example is Olo, um, O H L O E. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about yeah. Oh, you mean like personas for storyboard? Yes. Well, Got it. Okay, cool. Just yeah. So I just want to throw something that I mentioned briefly, but I want to throw something you know uh, more specifically at this audience. That um, um, in in open source, the way you develop technology is people come up with good ideas and then they follow the process and the community moves it forward. So why should statistics be any different? Because we all care about it for different reasons and we have wonderful ideas of what can be measured and the way to handle this in the community is for whoever has this idea, you publish a blueprint uh, in any of the tools that make sense and then people who think it's a, it's a good idea and they're passionate about it will go and get it done. And then there is a weekly call and an RC chat and uh, if there are different groups trying to do similar things, you get together and you talk and you decide how you kind of marry that. Because clearly, just you know, little, little comment. So I noticed, for example, on your statistics that NEC suddenly became a large contributor in the lines of code. Now we saw that, but I think that was just a type of a thing. <coughs> Excuse me, that was some renaming, uh, synthetic renaming, and that kind of threw the statistics off. So we have some logic internally that kind of takes, you know, and, you know, downplays that number. I think you guys have as well. So that's an example of maybe the way we process lines of code and the heuristics of that could be taken into, you know, separate place and we all can share in it. So we don't have to do three algorithms. And in fact, we agree on how we do the basic data processing, right? And maybe Biterja tools, if you guys have spent time thinking about that, maybe they should become a foundation for that. But for all the ideas, that, that, that we have about what to measure, blueprint, community, and let's just do it together. And we don't Absolutely. know what we don't know, and there'll be so many things. I mean, the reason we have this is because it came from the you know, community. We started with lines of code. We got tremendous criticism, and people <laughs> said, you can't just do lines of code. It means nothing, and you know, we should do reviews. So we did reviews. Oh, you should do commits. We did commits. We should do this, that, this, and we did, right? And you know, now you have uh, Josh, you know, is fixing bugs and other people are saying, well, this doesn't reflect properly and now they're, you know, fixing it, you know. So it starts to live. So I think that's the best way in open source. Absolutely. Let's, let's measure it ourselves. Let's have a community, transparent way of having community. Absolutely. So that's um, I think we are running, are we running out of time? Oh, did we already run out? Oh, no, no. We still have three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Dan, were you about to say something? Yeah, Dan, yeah. I, I would say that probably the point is to have this uh, quality data as a basement for all of us, and then just to produce some other charts in case you may be interesting. So all of the data could be the feed for your pets, let's say, somehow. So uh, that's, that's probably our point here, just yeah. to, to go for this, and then anyone can choose whatever they want to visualize in somehow. True, I think that mm -hmm. one of the main, the main uh, point of uh, point of concern was is still 
um, the, the affiliation between people, uh, like the individual engineer or the individual person that has reported a bug and the company that works for, that he works for, the affiliation. And um, you know, uh, um, we, have, we have that, the, that affiliation field uh, is mandated by the OpenStack Foundation membership. So when, you're a me when you need to commit code, you need to be a member of the foundation. And being a member of the foundation forces you to specify, to declare explicitly and keep current who you're working for um, or who has paid you uh, $60,000 uh, during the past 12 months uh, to work on OpenStack. And that affiliation needs to be shown in the, in the individual member profile. And until now, we had, until a week ago, we had a problem inside the, the member database that prevented uh, people from logging more than one affiliation and prevented from logging uh, the multiple affiliation with the time where the affiliation was actually valuable. Um, we landed a patch before the summit, so now it's possible for you to specify the, the time when you were working for HP, for IBM, or whoever, um, finally. And we're also gonna, uh, in the next month, we're gonna make this um, all this code that runs OpenStack.org public, so we will be able to accept the patches. So at least I think we will get a much better source of that affiliation data that every project that right now is the cre recreating a master data source will have a master data source, or at least a better way to, f to improve the data. Yeah, and, and I think um, key to that also, which you're also working on, is making it really simple for anybody to update, or, or for the individuals to update their profiles. Right, right. Seamlessly and across all of the, the projects. Right now, we suffer from, you know, because of the shortcomings of the OpenStack Foundation member database, I think we all um, arrived at our own individual uh, databases of user affiliations for each of our yes. uh, efforts. And, you know, that's uh, that's a silly uh, duplication of effort that we don't yeah. need to do. The other thing that the foundation is doing is that uh, is to make this member profile more useful because right now you only need to create it once and then you forget about it. Basically, you need it to create it to create it when you need to uh, land your first patch and you realize that you need to be a member first. So that's you create it and you're done. Uh, we're launching a, a new portal. Uh, called for user groups uh, that will use an open ID provider and the open ID provider is the members database. So s starting with uh, now with the user groups portal, but later also with other properties, we will switch from using Launchpad as an open ID provider to OpenStack.org being the open ID provider. So at least, you know, there will be more reasons for you to log in into the, this database, this system and keep your data up up to date, slowly. <laughs> well, actually, I hope rapidly. <laughs> and all of this will be available uh, with uh, uh, publicly on Git and uh, uh, git.openstack.org and uh, with Garrett reviews and all of that. So I see people coming in and probably we are done. If there are no more questions, I would say thank you. Thank you for all the balance.